the difficulties that all of us are going through now are not things that we need to have to emphasize and reiterate. It's obvious, and the, the source of it is also something that all of us know. It's having a, a, a differing in impacts on the different economies and countries, but the root causes of it are, 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 are well known, and uh, they are matters that we have to also resolve together. I believe that at the end of the day, it is this cooperation across borders in our regions that will give us the, base, the strongest base in which to deal with the problems that have emerged in these last two years. So as you know by now, the president has uh, summoned his um, economic management team and they are supposed to be in a crunch meeting to deliberate on what to do to steer the economy away from what it is currently suffering and to try to cushion you a bit. So are the times said to be hard? Are they exaggerated or they are facts? Can government actually afford to cushion Ghanaians? People have had their views. We have, for example, Professor Ransford Jampo, who is saying they should take a 30% cut in pay. How much of that will that even do a dent in our circumstance? He says, for example, that there should be a reduction in the size of government that aligns with the IEA's position. The IEA gives a specific number that the president should cut down on his bloated government. You know, he gave us a historic bloated government, never before, never before we've had in this country, he gave us in excess of 100 ministers and justified it, but managed to reduce it a bit. But now, what is he going to do? How much of that will lead to how much of savings for the country? Alex Mould, uh, former boss of the uh, GNPC, also says that government could look at there is a 550 million US dollars uh, windfall from crude oil sales that we can rely on to cushion the people. Professor Stephen Adair suggests that there should be a 25% pay cut for the executive uh, to prevent things from getting worse. How much of that will prevent things from getting worse? He also says that the government could use the funds uh, in the SHS, some of the, the senior high school, the free SHS, could use some of the funds to be spent on the top schools excluded from the policy uh, to develop the community secondary schools in the country. He says, we have to look at it again. I think that there are certain schools which we should make autonomous and fee paying and people will go there but then make sure there are good community schools for everybody else. According to him, only a few of the majority of poor students usually get admission to category A secondary schools, including Achimota. That's the need to make the rich students who attend such schools pay fees. Right. Uh, Achimotans are in trouble. <laughs> right. Okay, so uh, as I announced you earlier, my guest for this segment, uh, still here with us, Robert Nia de Clark. He's lawyer and author. John uh, Ewa is chief executive officer, Ghana Association of Banks. And Dr. Prisla Chumisi Bafo is senior uh, lecturer, Department of Economics, University of Ghana. Mildred Aziz is a businesswoman. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much. Mark. Right. Great. Um, so let's, let's begin with Prisla. You, you are able to look at the economy from a certain perspective, and we've had the rep privilege of having you proffer solutions to the circumstances from the start of the year, even before we entered this year. How do you see our circumstances? And what should the president and his ministers be discussing um, at uh, Pediasi? 
Thanks once again, Samson, and good morning to your cherished listeners and viewers. I believe that indeed these are challenging times globally. I would want to put the discussion in context. Right. Um, so it's not an isolated situation for Ghana, but our situation is becoming peculiar because of the recent happenings in terms of, for example, um, the downgrade of Ghana um, by international rating agencies. That has sort of cut us off from the international capital market, which was an avenue that we had in recent times become quite used to, mm. and for that matter um, was consistently, we were able to use it to manage, for instance, um, our currency due to inflows of um, some of those resources. Now, it appears that because of that, um, that avenue is no no longer there and so it um, and in terms of the recent depreciation of the currency as well we know it is also cyclical that around this time as uh, multilaterals close their books um, in December and January um, they repatriate profits in foreign currency so there's always the demand for um, foreign currency around this time the challenge at this point, really, is the fact that uh, because of the happenings and the seemingly difficulty that government is um, facing in terms of generating revenue, it is also feeding into um, consistently people not having too much confidence in the Ghanaian economy. So on the currency side, you see that um, there's a lot of speculation that is happening because people would want to make money off the movement on the forest market. On the back of that is the Ukraine war that is also leading to increasing yeah. um, um, crude prices. So indeed, it's a, it's a blend of things. So if you are a manager of the economy at this point in time, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult situation. But for me, I would say that the challenge ought to, is tackled um, from two perspectives. So the monetary side, the Bank of Ghana ought to do its bit. And then on the fiscal side, um, the president, the cabinet, economic management committee was also do this. On the monetary side, I expect that the monetary policy committee ought to act fast and quick at the moment to try to sort of increase the policy rate to give a signal to the market. So for example, um, so that it will restore a bit of confidence because of the high um, inflation rates that we are also currently facing. Returns on investment are basically um, negative in terms of real returns. So people would also want to find alternative investment elsewhere, all putting pressure on the currency. So if we are able to stabilize the currency by, for example, increasing the policy rate so that interest rates pick up, it is an indication to the market that, okay, so um, all is not lost. There's some that we can still salvage. And when local domestic instruments also turn out to yield positive returns, then it means that people who are also looking for alternatives elsewhere will slow down on that bit, and that demand side would come down. That could also feed into the pricing of petroleum at the pumps because we know that the rising cost of fuel is as a result of one the depreciation of the currency and the price on the international market so if we are able to sort of reduce the rate of inflation depreciation in the currency then we could stem that tide a bit hmm. on the fiscal side that is what government can do I believe that there are a number of things for example there's been a talk of government should send a signal as to a tightening it's built. There is a little that those things can do, but at least it is a signal, it okay. is an indication okay. that government realizes that these are hard times and for that matter, it's sending the signal out there. Mm. In terms of the pricing of petroleum, when you look at the build-up, you see that there are a number of things that probably government can do to cushion the ordinary Ghanaian. So, for example, there's been the talk that there should be a revision or a removal of some of the levies. But when you look at them really, for example, um, sanitation and pollution levy is something 10p, um, price stabilization recovery levy is 14p, energy sector recovery levy is 20p. So when you look at these, it is something
something that government could consider um, to sort of cushion. But at the moment, the price of um, a petrol at the pump is around 10 cities. When you tally these, they don't even come up to one city. Mm. So at the po you, you need to weigh the cost and benefit. Mm. In terms of how much it is going to cost government to reduce these, we have to look at it. Is it better for government to, for example, keep it going and also find other avenues of cushioning the poor in that regard? Mm. For example, what happens to our public transportation system, for instance? These are times that those are necessary that you could use to cushion people so that the emphasis is on providing social safety net for those at the very bottom. But at best, it is a global issue, and I think that we need to recognize that as well. Um, you, you, and what is the value of the suggestions from various quarters, including from the IEA, um, in at least corporate governance? Uh, Prisler just said that it, there's something it will do. The IEA says, take urgent measures to reduce expenditure <clears throat> whose level and composition remain problematic. The measures should include the following. Restructuring ministries and reduce the number from 30 to 20 ministries. Then reduce the number of ministers from 86 to 56, including the 16 regional ministers slash executive pay by 20 percent professor jampo says 30 percent professor stephen adair says 25 percent mm -hmm. then a number of things like that like they say low hanging fruits mm -hmm. in corporate governance and you have written on this what, what will this do because people say this is just a drop in the ocean I mean, look, this is a political decision, <laughs> right? It's a political decision. Whichever way you look at it, it's, a, it's politics at play. And politics and economics are always bedfellows. Mm. They go together. Yeah, but people are hungry. Absolutely. That's why I say they, they go together. Because the decision making at this stage is an executive decision. Mm. There's a politics of it. Uh, people put some people in power to run the affairs of the nation and all of that. And the economists will tell you that we are what rational beings or something to that effect. And therefore, when there's an overflow, uh, we, we sort of expand our taste somewhat. And when we are in hard times, we contract uh, the things that we can do. And it applies at all levels. Samson, on the political front, I believe that we are dealing with a larger society. And the actions of the leadership will definitely have a, an impact on the way people see things and whether people understand things or not. Truth is, I don't know how much the salary bit will do and all of that, but there are a lot of perks involved. There are a lot of vehicles involved. There are a lot of free petrol involved. If you are on some WhatsApp groups and all of that, people will show you evidence of some coupons that they have just received from some friends who are in certain places, mm -hmm. for which reason they don't have to buy fuel and all of that. I think that confidence, I agree with her absolutely that it is a global phenomenon occurring at this time, which is having an impact on us as well, mm. in the face of COVID-19 that we nobody saw coming. Mm. However, but there's a position the by the opposition and other uh, experts, which the World Bank in Ghana confirms that our situation was already getting bad before COVID. Okay, so that was my second half, and thank you for doing this job for me. But the second part is that, however, that notwithstanding, there's a reason why we always do a comparative analysis. Because that impact, it's not exclusive to us. We are not insular. There are people around us who are having that impact as well. So if we talk about currency depreciation, it's easy to put up some sort of a graph and mm. see whether the impact is, is the same for everybody. When you talk about government expenditure, it's easy to look around and see how it is happening. When you look at incomes, it's easy to do all of that. So far, we've seen that the depreciation issues with respect to the Ghana CD as compared to the major currencies in Africa is terrible. Mm. So it's difficult on that score to then make an argument and say that it is purely a matter of COVID-19 coming on board or some issues happening. Because we ourselves, without waiting for the World Bank to tell us, can see that when I see how other currencies are behaving, it's a bit shocking to hear that the Ghanaian city, uh, for example, was maybe last but one and all of a sudden a week later is the bottom. The worst performing. Uh, is in the bottom. So everybody else 
then raises an eyebrow and begins to wonder what's happening to us. Why are we in a worse situation than other people? The issue about currency, the issue about uh, people making some money off, the issue people make exchange, happens everywhere. In Nigeria, mm -hmm. in Zambia, in Tanzania, in Kenya. Everybody does those same things. What is the reason why its impact in Ghana is greater or worse than it's in the other places? So now to the psychology of it. If I see that government is living a certain lifestyle, where the people who are leading us, for example, and therefore have access to state resources and largesse, if you like, are living in a certain manner that I don't, uh, we don't have access to. People worry. We know that when we talk about taxing, we were, these days we talk about taxing. Mm -hmm. Tax is an extremely important component of the existence of any nation, whether we like it or not. That's right. But some people have a problem with what they consider their capital being taxed mm -hmm. and their profit being taxed. What I mean is that it gets to a situation where if activity is really thriving, and people are doing things for which reason X and Y is being taken off it. Some people don't have a problem because they stay. In a situation where the calculation is done such that you realize that what you even have at home, and it's a small proportion or percentage of the population that are in that formal tax bracket, who have to bear the brunt of these matters, mm. there becomes some worry. So I agree, those measures must be, some measures must be taken. I want, that's, that's the reason for leadership, isn't it? Leadership is by showing that, hey, we are talking about IMF. There's a meeting going on today. We remember the president saying categorically that we, he's taking, he's winning Ghana off the IMF. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a the difficulty with the politics of it. Whether to say, okay, now I give in, give in to this, given the fact that these circumstances have arisen. None of us saw COVID coming, etc. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to the IMF. That sort of decision will have to be made. Again, these are the number of ministers I put in place. This is their total cost on the state. The way I can reduce that cost, etc., is by reducing their numbers and all of that. As you say, it may be nominal in terms of what we have as a total nation, but that signal is valueless. That signal tells something to the world. In all the analysis that we hear all the time, something you were mentioning corporate governance. Mm. I, 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 I'm a bit surprised that a lot of the time when we speak, we don't hear much analysis and emphasis with respect to the capital markets in Ghana. Look, I was told not too long ago, credibly, that until MT, uh, MTN, once MTN got on there, and MTN didn't come there simply because it wanted to. I think they had to do with some 4G license and mm -hmm. things like that, you know, as a condition, word, and all of that. MTN trading sometimes, I'm told, in the, within a season, a quarter, two quarters, etc., can account for about 60% of the total trading value over there. Mm -hmm. Imagine the size of the capital market without MTN only. Put MTN aside. Now look at the companies that are as big almost as big or probably bigger than MTN in Ghana who, are, who do not have a desire to go there. Something. In all the economies of the world, the advanced ones, if you like, or the ones struggling to make it to a certain top, that is a very key component of the activities that they do in the economy, how it affects people in their markets and their pockets, and etc. Why does it develop here? Never mind the fact that, like they say, everywhere the British went, they set up capital markets as part of colonialism and growing of the economy, except for the places where there was a disease environment, in our case, malaria. So then they took out those commodities, etc., and all of that to their places, and it has continued. We've never been able to turn it around. But in some other places where they established those things, we can see the markets growing. We tried it from 1990. It hasn't happened. Do you know what the problem is, largely? We talk about all these massive state-owned enterprises, etc., mm. or government-owned bodies which are not participating there. And you expect private entities in this country to willingly go and, and, and participate. When the, state, the state enterprises that have specialized in making losses. But that's our Huge you know losses. You know they why? don't make profit. You know why? It's very easy. It's not rocket science. In the world of corporate governance, if you want to see... Their CEOs are some of the best paid. Some of them pay better than the president. Let me tell you what the problem is. Let me, <laughs> let's, let's keep the pay aside. When... What happens in the fix and the correction, et cetera, they've done it in Brazil and all of that, is that when, why do you think that MTN, et cetera, and all that come to the markets and they are still fantastic and they do well? Why do you think there isn't that attraction? Why do you think that where governments can buy some shares or some ownership in some of these listed companies, it does that and it still gets benefit? Why? It's because the government entities that we have like the 100% control. Mm. So the shareholder is government. The government then decide who is the director mm. and who are the directors and who does everything else. When you come onto the market and you have to play by those rules of spread, that you must have at least a certain number of people participating, etc. I take, I will take you away, and even now I take is 25% or so, which means that you can still hold 75%. There are key 
these issues that we must solve as a country, these are some of the matters. We can decide that the state, these state enterprises are coming onto the market. They are large. They are big. Because government is going to hold, say, 49% or 47%, we must dare. Sometimes you must make the things work to your benefit. Mm. And that Ghanaians or whoever, mm. you can cut out the foreign thing, are going to hold this portion. Something. It will bring a check on how directors are chosen. Mm -hmm. It will bring a check on how long they stay there. It will bring a check on who pays, who gets how much. It's not government who then determines anymore. And all that. Immediately those things are done. And in the West, when we cite these things with happiness, those principles happen because the public space, as far as the markets are concerned, control these principles, mm. for which reason private entities also then get affected. Mm. Unless and until government is willing to make that aspect of our economy thrive by going through these principles. Whenever these problems happen or whenever we have issues about how large our pie is, the pie is always missing that aspect mm. of things. And until we enlarge it, M we cannot share a good M chance. M Mildred, um, how are you affected by the circumstances we find ourselves in? And for you, what should be the immediate measures? Um, hello, Mildred. You need to unmute. Yeah. Is it okay now? Great. Yes. Good Good morning and um, good morning to your cherished viewers and listeners. And uh, I've listened to the other two guests and, you know, all the solution they are giving is very fantastic. <laughs> but, in fact, the ordinary Ghanaian cannot wait for all these things um, to take place and the impact to happen. But in the short term, I think as a businesswoman uh, for the average Ghanaian and everything, the government should really look at these three key points. Mm -hmm. These are every individual depend on food, shelter, and education. That's the basic thing every, in, in this uh, regime everything rely, everybody rely on. And when it comes to these factors, the government uh, in connection with um, the Ministry of Trade should check the industries that provide services for these, like the industries that provide food, the industries that provide shelter in terms of building and all those things. Once they do something to help the industries to not to inflict anyhow, in the very short term, I think, I mean, the ordinary Ghanaian will mm. be cushioned in a bit. Whilst we wait for all our economists and everybody to do the ones that will take effect in the long term. Mm. You tell, know? Us, tell us about the business you are involved in and what is happening now. That didn't used to be the case. Yeah, exactly. Typically, we are involved in building, building materials and everything. And you bear witness that mm. for these past few weeks, we've been seeing hikes in the price and everything is very worrying because everybody will sleep at the end of the day and it's in a building so it affects the, the building materials mm. now when we look at the cost of building materials and the rate at which it's it's just rising mm. give us yes, examples you know, give us examples ex examples are cement and iron rods mm -hmm. and blocks these are like basic ones what has happened to the but price we, of cement the price of cement just went out uh, last week, and um, iron rods in two weeks, it has gone up almost like three times. So I think what the government... Cement, can cement, do to, cement has gone up from what to what? We used to sell cement between 48 to 50 cities per bag. Now it's moving between 51 and 55 depending on the area. When, when, did, you start selling, when did you start selling cement for 40, 48, and 50? Come again. When did the price of cement go as high as 40, 48, and 50? Yes, the last increment that pushed us to around 48 was in December. Mm. Yes, was in December. I mean, that was the last time it was pushed to 48. That was the last time it was increased. Mm. Now... You because of obvious reasons, that the, the currency depreciation, the cost in the fuel prices, we are expecting increases. And I know the government is always in, in, in negotiation with the cement companies. So even before they come up, they are aware and everything. 
But the other ones, for instance, iron rods. I mean, is the government in, in, in constant negotiation with them? Because just in two weeks, we've seen persistent increase in it. And I don't know, most of them are produced locally. So the government needs to look there and let us understand some of the factors that influence their increase. Mm. Because are they... <clears throat> Okay, um, we have a problem with her line, but you hold on there and let me go to John Ewa. Uh, John Ewa is Chief Executive Officer at the Ghana Association of Banks. Um, John, thank you very much for joining us. And you would have heard the suggestions that uh, have come up, including what the central bank should be doing. Uh, uh, Dr. Prisla uh, has just been speaking about some of those things, including uh, increase in the policy rates and she says that will restore uh, confidence the iea issued a statement and is saying almost the same thing about what has to be done it says the bank of ghana should increase the policy rate by 200 basis points from 14 to 5 uh, from 14.5 percent to uh, 16 0.5% to stem inflation while also increasing the attractiveness of the CD denominated assets to stem disinvestment from the money and capital markets. Now, uh, Nia de Clark uh, paid attention to the money and capital markets and the negative effects on the CD increase the primary uh, reserve requirement from 8% to 10% to help curb liquidity creation. Uh, by banks, which could fuel both inflation and exchange rate depreciation, change the current currency, foreign currency CD primary reserve requirement to foreign currency, uh, currency foreign currency again, is that a mistake? Requirement to help boost foreign currency reserves at the Bank of Ghana, and this will also meet a long-standing demand by the banks. Um, like uh, Mildred, perhaps, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I can't <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and, and thank you for having me. First and foremost, um, I do not necessarily um, agree with the IEA on the point about um, using particularly the cash reserve ratio to reduce the liquidity in the environment um, in the economy, um, because uh, in their view, um, there's excess liquidity that is fueling um, inflation. Uh, one thing that we, we have to be very careful about um, is in our attempt to solve our one problem, we do not create a series of problems. Um, we all agree that lending to the productive sectors of the economy is not a level that we all need or we all expect. And therefore, uh, to increase the cash reserve requirement will be limiting the ability for banks to mobilize the required liquidity to be able to lend. So uh, the regulator, in their own re uh, wisdom, in order to propel lending um, to the economy, um, um, brought down the cash reserve requirement from the 10% as it was before um, to 8%. And we, we have every confidence that that should be maintained at least in the interim, because we still need to inject liquidity um, into uh, businesses, households, and um, uh, in, in, in other um, uh, ventures as well. But on the case of using the monetary policy to arrest um, the seeming um, rising inflation, of course, um, that is one of the key objectives of the uh, policy rate to manage um, inflationary pressures um, or otherwise. So, um, you know, Bank of Ghana, again, it was supposed to, uh, to be meeting latter part of this month, uh, decided to bring, bring forward the MPC meetings. And we, we have every reason to believe that it's an attempt um, for them to bring forward, that the, that the decision to bring forward the uh, MPC meeting is an attempt to come out with a statement earlier than I would have anticipated. So uh, I would not be surprised at all if the policy rate goes up. I'm not sure about 200 basis points, but we anticipate that definitely, definitely, Bank of Ghana is going to have to increase the policy rate 
um, um, by up to about 100 or 150 basis points uh, mm -hmm. when the, um, the, their report is released. What, what do you make of suggestions about uh, slashing executive pay, um, about introducing government parent cost sharing arrangement for the free senior high school policy, um, abolishing the purchase of past examination questions for students, scrapping NAPCO, uh, freezing allowances for nurses and teacher trainees. Um, President Mahama did this, they didn't get any support for it. Uh, this government committed itself to it in political campaign. It must keep to that pro promise. Now we are saying they should freeze allowances for nursing and teacher trainees and then impose a temporary freeze on recruitment into the public service. People don't want to hear things like this. What do you say? In fact, these are all the things that we want to hear. Unfortunately, those are the things that we want to hear. Um, when you are in crisis, the tone that you set is critical. When people talk about how much are you going to save if um, public uh, uh, officers, public officers and um, government functionaries are stopped from traveling, how much money are we going to save? It is not the quantum of money, but it's the tone that is set uh, which is more important. If you set the right tone, then um, if tomorrow uh, Guta or uh, UTAG or any of these trade unions is making demands, make reference to the sacrifices that um, the, uh, the managers of the economy knowing the problems that we are sitting on have taken themselves. So if you look at the quantum of savings, you will not take any action because there is no one single handle of cost element mm. that is going to give you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of savings. It is little savings here, little savings there, all together that will come to the level of savings or cost pattern that we are looking at. Let me tell you something. When the minister announced that uh, they were going to cut the budget expenditure by 20%. There was an instant response on the international market. Instant. On that day, the, uh, uh, the bond, the, uh, the Ghana's bond traded favorably, which means that the global business community is watching us. Unfortunately, when that statement came, we did not do a full on statement. What the business of the spectrum was, okay, you said 20%. What are the cost items that are going to be, to be cut? In my view, as a finance professional, you cannot say a blanket 25% across the board for all discretionary spend. It is going to have to be um, a certain cost line being 100% cut off, others maybe 10%, in other cost elements 50%, others 50, 15%, 2% here, and in all together, perhaps we'll give you the average of 20%, the minister talked about. We need to bring confidence and policy credibility to the table. That is what the international market is watching. Why we are getting punished is, what, is that we have kept too quiet for too long. Mm. When you are in crisis, you have to be seen to be doing something, and that which you are doing should be visible. People must know what is happening. And that is why, personally, I have said, and when I said it, it became, you know, I got all kinds of um, um, feedback from, um, uh, the, you know, in Ghana, everything is politicized. I said, <laughs> why is the government paying my school? I've not asked for it. Why is free SHS free for me? Why is it free for people like me and a lot more people who have not asked for it? <laughs> it we always hide behind the absence of data and every social intervention, we do blanket application to both the rich and the poor. So the rich get subsidized. They put their children to primary schools and pay thousands and thousands of school fees. And then when they get to secondary school, they get it for free. I, I just can't bring myself to understand this. There is a way of finding out brilliant, not even just brilliant, the needy students or the needy uh, parents who uh, uh, work in the secondary schools may, uh, may, may need some support. And some said, one other thing, there is no country, I've, I've done my checks, no country under the sun that gives free boarding education. Free boarding. 
America doesn't do that. UK doesn't do that. Australia doesn't do that. Germany doesn't do that. These are the countries we visit to take money, to subsidize our education. And then we give free boarding education, free breakfast, free lunch, free supper, free uniforms, free shoes, free books, free tuition, electricity, water from a poor country. I'm not sure that is how you solve a problem when you are sitting on a huge fiscal gap, and all we are doing is taking actions that further broadens the fiscal deficit. Mm. Let me I, I, and also highlight a little thing that happened. We talked about um, um, uh, the effect of some of the savings that um, uh, people have recommended, the cost-cutting measures that people have recommended. I 100% support most of the initiatives that come on the table. I, 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 I picked a phone and called a few friends over the last two, three weeks, people who work in the public sector. You call this man, I'm in Dubai, I'm at a Dubai Expo. You call that, I'm in Dubai Expo. We are, our public disposition does not reflect uh, uh, our circumstance. Uh, it is more or less we are doing the things that we, uh, we want to do when we are you know, in good times, not recognizing the fact that you know, the country is in serious crisis. As banks, we have serious challenges. When the economy suffers, the overall burden is borne by the bank because we cushion or we fuel the economy with liquidity. And when businesses are struggling and unable to pay, the distress is transferred onto the banks, mm -hmm. and the banks will now bear the brunt. Mm -hmm. uh, as we speak, even uh, from the uh, uh, public sector pay at the controller level, in terms of payment from the controller, we are about two, three months in arrears. Mm. What that happens is potentially we are going to have to be reporting to the Federal Reference Bureau people who do not know that they are even defaulting the loans. These are the realities on the ground, and we must be seen to be tackling them head on. All Let's right. take politics out. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll take a break Let's here. I'll take a break here, and when I return, um, Priscilla, there's uh, a question from uh, Richmond Kwame uh, from Pong. He says, if the Bank of Ghana increases policy rate, it will also hike cost of credit and crowd out the private sector. How do you sync that with the recommendations of increasing policy rate to stabilize the CD? And uh, Richmond, who has been helping people individually about financial wellness says that as individuals, this is what you should do. Let me name the things he wants you to do. <laughs> it says become your own CFO. That's chief finance officer. Don't live a champagne life on a palm wine income. <laughs> live on less than you make. Don't act rich. Become rich. Moonlight to create extra income. Spend on assets and not on liabilities. Don't shop when you are hungry. Combine your errands into fewer trips and carpool when possible. You know, the fuel prices are just doing a hazard. And just uh, how many weeks ago, the transportation fares were increased. It is expected that they will go up further, maybe just in the coming week. We'll be right back. For decades, we have helped businesses connect with their trade partners all over the globe. From Ghana to Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Benin, Togo, Senegal, China, Morocco, France, Netherlands, and many other countries. We have made it possible to bring Ghana to the world. We have brought small and medium businesses closer to their customers across the regions in Ghana with our SME support facilities. We have brought relief and smiles to the faces of families with our employee personal loans. With our cutting-edge technology and digital support, we take the burden of complex thinking off you. Making life simple. That is who we are. As close as a partner. Bank of Africa. 
We are indeed the African Bank with the global reach. Hey, <laughs> I will in your notification. I will pray you have a far home man. And for so be safe, any traffic in the Yenka. Now the idea of it here, the far over the whole school world here, which you have far up. Catch us a smart happy man. It's me, my own for what you want, my dad, you know. Mama, the woman who said, Oh, my school, baby, I won't go be a super school. Any smart appa. At the same one, I could see now in silver, aka. Smart app. Started from today. If you're not excited after one turn, we will refund 100% money back. You thought of way to get your dream home? Really, that's offering you a better option. Check out our exclusive or detached house gated community. Sizes ranges from cozy three bedrooms to a luxurious five bedrooms. We at Waylaid are committed to providing you with the best building quality and value for money. In fact, we are the proud recipient of 2019's Quality Property Firm Award. Just like our homes, our payment terms focus on your need. Choose from installment up to 24 months without interest. Or take advantage of month gauge up to 20 years. At Waylead, we build homes for you. Call us now on 0240 or 050-4499-999 to secure your dream home now. Waylead. taxes you put yourself at risk of persecution do the right thing pay your duties and taxes online through the bank or from your phone on time and let's build a great nation This is News File, the most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. It's brought to you by Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner, MTN everywhere you go, Ashasi University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa, Robert and Sons. Optical Services, your comprehensive eye care services provider for 31 years. Way lead properties, home is where one starts. CBG, we stand with you. Edlom Housing, where... Spacious homes cost less. Duraplus, where Duraplus goes, water flows. And Rehoboth properties, quality housing for all. Uh, thank you for staying with us. I'll share uh, a few of your messages and then we will have uh, your questions answered. Of course, the first question um, I have already put it to uh, Presler. Now, Okay, I find that most of the messages are about the first segment, but why not? Let's go. Uh, this one from um, Agbeli. It says that to learn consensus building is a must.
However, the structure to encourage that consensus building is not there. That is in Parliament. In the US, um, it is called the cooling system. I repeat, unicameral parliamentary system is adversarial and does not promote unity and balance. Um, Musa Abatoa says, the lawyer's point of view, it's very difficult for the Supreme Court to rescind their decision unless there is fresh evidence which the seven judges have not averted their mind to. Can future set of panel of judges overturn or set aside the questionable judgments? Well, it is 30 days. After 30 days, if you don't go to do it, it's gone. So if you are talking about future and talk, linking it to politics, then I don't know. Uh, Bobby Banks, uh, this one is from AJ, AJ Bequeen. It says, Bobby Banson, wow, young intellects who appear on news file continue to thrill me with their fantastic analysis of issues. And they do so not only with book knowledge, but with wisdom. Kwesi Kisiedu says, news file, um, able to engineer a good argument to be reviewed by the Supreme Court on their earlier verdict will be a difficult task. Nyavo John says the courts miss the constitutional history of deputy speakers and have inserted an article in the constitution that the framers have expressly rejected. Are you sure about that? Cost of living in Ghana. Uh, Kudo, Kudodo Savior says always on a borrowing spree. The state regulator borrowing much. Likewise, the citizens. Sir Stees says it's really a papa -pa -pa movement living in Ghana. Uh, Donald Nee says, I take it one day at a time. I try as much as possible not to worry about tomorrow because it's going to damage my already exhausted morale. And Gasma one says, I am I'm reducing the number of times I travel to see my family. I'm checking my cravings. I want the government to do same as well. Be efficient in applying our resources. Stop the wastage and pilfering and block all the loopholes. Uh, Masaudu Jr. says, in fact, cost of living in Ghana is very unbearable, but the people in power talk as if they are, li they are living in a different Ghana. We don't uh, know about. Um, thank you for those messages. Now, uh, Dr. Priscilla Chumisiba, for the question that came to you was, if you increase the policy rate, you say that among others will restore confidence. But uh, which one Kwame from Pong's question is that, that will also lead to, um, is it uh, crowding out the a crowding out and, you know, uh, make credit unavailable? What do you say to that? Yes, I agree. So it's a choice we have to make. We are faced with a challenge. Um, but first of all, if we do not stabilize the environment, it means that the investment, first of all, will not thrive. So yes, an increase in the policy rate will increase the, um, the lending rate will inch it up. Um, but that said, it is supposed to curtail the inflationary pressures that is happening because investment will not thrive if inflation is on the ascendancy. So it's more like choosing the lesser of two evils. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, when we are able to stabilize and go um, inflation, control the rate of inflation, then the rate could be dropped so that you do not unnecessarily um, crowd out the private sector. But that said, I mean, there is even the, the rigid um, 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 uh, transition I mean, the policy rate really does not translate into the lending rate on the, on the market. So okay. that is another um, discussion. What's your, take on, what's your take on, you know, cutting back on free SHS? Um, the finance minister, if you remember at the very start, this was something he tried to suggest, but he was, he was stampeded by his own party people not to dare say anything that was contrary to the president's free SHS mantra. 
Indeed, um, like um, the president of the Bankers Association indicated, our problem in this country has been lack of targeting. Um, nobody is saying that free SHS is not um, a, a good policy. It is. Um, we have examples all over. Um, I know of a young lady, but for which free SHS, she wouldn't have gone to the secondary school. So for those people, that policy is great. Mm. But there are a lot of beneficiaries of the program that do not need it. And that is the issue that we have. What is the point in granting free SHS to um, children that go to top class private schools during the primary level? And all of a sudden, those children are, for example, holding mobile phones that are more expensive than their mm. school fees. Mm. And they are being given for free. So the issue is, can we sit back? target and probably roll out a scholarship scheme for the needy students who rather would be the greater beneficiaries of the program rather than giving it out to everybody for free. But at this point, really, I believe that given that we are in hard times, it may not be a very prudent measure to take at the moment because even the supposedly affluent families are also feeling the pinch of the mm -hmm. hardship that is um, um, occurring. But I think that going forward, it is something that needs to be looked at. The problem for me has always been the politicization of these things. Mm. Because as we talk about, the moment implementers of the program realize the challenge and try to modify it, another group is available to sing a song mm. in victory to say that yes we we said it not too long ago you were very concerned reading the statistics of unemployment as uh, generated by the state itself um, when you hear that some of the measures to take is to scrap napco is to stop uh, recruitment into the public services um, how do you take that indeed i have always um, had the opinion that uh, expanding the public sector is not a way to solve a problem of unemployment. So for us, we have to look at our industrialization strategy. Mm. And it is the most effective way of generating jobs. We have to look at what is happening to our manufacturing sector, investment in the sector, encouraging young people to move into that sector, particularly along the agricultural value chain, adding value to the produce and all that that come out of our agricultural sector so that we create layers of employment. And at the back of all that is happening with the depreciation of the city is our over-reliance on imports because we are really importing everything into mm. this country. Mm. I mean, yesterday I was surprised to find something on uh, Facebook that somebody had bought imported intestines. Mm. And I, I was shocked to know that all these things are imported. So we expect exchange our hard-earned CD for the dollar to go and import, um, um, I mean, everything. And that is the problem. If we are able to take Maybe our... we are importing Willie. Because Certainly. this is where we get to. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> yeah. So indeed, if we are able to take our industrialization drive seriously, mm. create agro-processing firms, that means that we'll be solving the problem of the constant pressure on the city. And this is long-term. Medium to long term, okay. really, medium to long term, mm. because these agro-processing firms, they are not big giant firms that require lots of investment mm. to set up. Mm. When you look at some of the, um, the, the firms under the One District, One Factory Initiative, right. mm. I think that those are examples that we could use to generate the jobs ease the pressure on the currency and also i mean move forward as a country as we we structure we hear the city will get worse and circumstances will not normalize any time soon irrespective of whatever the measures it is that we are talking about the president and his men and women are meeting now and deciding what to do if you had to tell them two things they should focus on immediately in the long term what will it be aside what you have said already it reminds me of a video somebody sent me this morning where my good friend and senior is Ankuma says i'm working i'm working like a bull <laughs> and i'm paying my taxes exactly the government, and got the to government work also has to work like a bull mm. it's not my duty to tell the government how to fix the economy he didn't even know how to fix it. i'm still quoting this <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even know how
how to fix it. Mm. Then why did they run for office? End of quote. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it sounded a bit funny to me watching it this very morning when mm. I said I was coming here to a friend and all of that. But in a certain sense, th those words are so true. It's a bit, you know, in, in many ways, yes, I like it that the government is taking this initiative. But I thought to myself that if it's a cabinet meeting, I was a bit surprised that it was thrown out to us as, you know, cabinet is going to meet today to talk about the economy. I mean, I think that that is what government is there to do. What I mean by that is, seriously, the cabinet does not ordinarily just announce that I'm going to meet today and talk about the economy. That's the point I'm making. That cabinet meets on the regular. And the president deciding to go to Pajuasi mm. uh, with, with his cabinet ministers, you know, and all of that, and then to have tweets come out saying that now it's a contest between mm -hmm. should we go to IMF or should we pursue uh, E-Levy, or is it one of uh, the two or neither of the two kind of thing? I was a bit surprised. I thought that this is the business of government, you know, to, to be doing it all the time. What can this, I say? This is a special one. Yes. Well, yeah, it's a special said. one. I'm, I'm saying that if mm -hmm. it's a special one, then it's almost a bit late, so, mm -hmm. somewhat. I mean, because this thing has been staring us in the face. Mm -hmm. And you said okay. that the World Bank, for example, I said that we're already on the, yeah. on, the, on, the, on the down slope and all of that. And yes. All. I've said on this program in the past, at the beginning of uh, uh, Free SHS, you remember, so, so some time ago, maybe mm -hmm. two years or so, I haven't been mm -hmm. on the show for a while, mm -hmm. where I, I, I used my own father as an example. I said that growing up in Bokobi, there was no way he would have ended up in a decided college as he did mm. if he did not have some f educate, free money to take to school. And he had actually said that himself. But on the same school, that man paid every single peso of my education throughout my seven years of education at Hachimoto School for a reason. Mm. He did not come to believe that merely because Nkrumah's government had done it for him that it should be the regular way of doing things. That is the targeting point. We we'll talk about a means test. It's easy to determine it. No, you're mentioning that somebody who went to Harvard earlier on and all of that, they will tell you. I know people who gain admission to Harvard who don't go because some other institution gave them all their money. Harvard will hardly do that, mm -hmm. no matter how poor you are. Mm -hmm. Because they call it skin in the game. You have to have some skin in the game. I'm still paying my, my, my fees. I have, my, I have some parts that I was paid for my, my program at Harvard, my master's degree. That is the way it works. If you finish about how many years ago? You I'm have to paying pay. it for 15 years. <laughs> okay. Because, <laughs> Your last point. Something. <laughs> Your last because one. you are doing some work. Mm. You are doing something, you're generating something. Mm. I, my, this is here, free SHS could be targeting a wholesale. This is Ken Oforiata in 2018. Mm -hmm. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata appears to be in agreement with the suggestion that the free senior high school program may have to be targeted at persons with genuine need and not made to benefit everyone. Using himself as an example, the minister says someone in his economic bracket should not be enjoying such a policy. This, I made, this, made that point before this article came out. Mm -hmm. And I agree absolutely and wholly. I personally do not want to pay the government to pay my children's school fees for me. I think that if the government has helped me go to some school, public school, done this and all of that, something you, you shouldn't benefit from free SHS hmm. with all the dough you are making on a daily basis in the courts. <laughs> but you have to make some effort. You see what I mean? I don't say that we shouldn't have free education for people. We, there are people who need it. Mm. We must do it for them. Right. But that heavy burden mm. is also one of the reasons. The only place where I probably slightly differ with Prisla is that uh, she says that it's difficult at this time. I think that the next cohort, so I'm not exactly different, uh, different. The next cohort going forward, government should consider that people who are able to pay should contribute and lessen the burden of government because things won't change anytime. Right. Mel Melvred, what will be your final words to... Uh, government and its team as they listen to you and also as an individual what are you doing to survive yes something like i rightly said all these things government needs to look at these three key points then make it easy for everybody because once they engage these uh, industries that produce these things because most of these industries even have tax holidays they have tax exemptions so it is this time that they also need to contribute to help government so that uh, they don't unnecessarily increase things anyhow. They really need to be guarded by government so that they don't take advantage of the increasing um, dollar, uh, the depreciating dollar and the increasing in fuel to just uh, increase their prices anyhow. Because we've seen it. Look, just like I was saying, in this past two weeks, iron rods have moved from 4,600 to 6,200 of 40%. Mm. 
So, um, it, it, these are things that have, have been produced in Ghana. Yes, the city deficiency will affect it and all that. But government really needs to look into those things and see that these industries too are not taking advantage of the situation. Mm. They also need to help. Mm. It's a global thing, like what right. I said. Mm. Yeah. So I, I think, I mean, once they look at these key things in terms of food, shelter, and education, education, they are already doing something about it in terms right. of the free ethics. Yeah. Uh, but these two other things, they need to look at it. Yeah. So that, uh, I mean, that in the, in the short term will help to push in the ordinary Ghanaian. Yes. Yeah. Uh, John, John, in a minute, what will you tell us? What are you doing by yourself um, to survive the circumstance? In my view, um, the, government, the president and his ministers in their meetings should consider. As the country, um, we need to, for the first time, look a bit long term. Uh, not too long ago, we had a similar seminar um, at a hotel somewhere um, and talking about homegrown policies. And what became of that? All of a sudden, we are back to square one, and we are having to have the same discussion again, because as a country, we are always sitting at one place and not looking at the long-term effect of some of the policy initiatives that we take. We have an export-led policy as a country. Meanwhile, we have discounted values of importations. How to compete with the small businesses that or manufacturing concerns that you set up in Ghana to be able to stop our, our dependence on importation. I don't know, it is counterintuitive to one bit want to increase exports and another bit saying you can bring importation from other countries and I'll discount the values so that it becomes cheaper. How does the, the, the company that is meant to export survive? And if this country is to move forward and we, should, we get to the point where we stop discussing these matters of FM, foreign currency, CD depreciation, and unemployment, it is building our light to heavy industries in this country. That is where jobs are created. We have as an economy a jaundiced uh, GDP structure. A, a country mm. of our, our, our standing currently as Ghana, mm. service sector contributes more than the uh, uh, industry. Okay. It should not be the case. So I want the president to take a long-term view. Mm. He may not be doing his time, but if he sets the, the foundation right. for others to keep and build on, mm. then that should be it. But okay. we should, for the first time, have a long-term view of some of the initiatives that we undertake. All right, country. thank you so very much, uh, John Ewa. And uh, as always, my outfit is by Habil's Couture. And Habil's Couture, you can find them at Adringano Gate, East Legon, and the contacts 0200-84-1988. Thank you also very much for tuning in and staying here with us for all this time. On the occasion of International Women's Day, uh, we thank Wilma Africa for helping us celebrate some of our amazing women who have been doing a good job to support us uh, discuss matters and shape the, 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 the national opinion. Uh, Prisla, Dr. Prisla Chumesi Bafo, this is from Wilma, Africa, uh, saying the thank you so much for making yourself available always to help national issues. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so on that note, have a good afternoon. I'm Samson Ladi Anyanini. <laughs>